Rango, Rango <laughs> is, is directed by Gore Verbinski, the director of the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy, as well as movies like The Ring and, most importantly, Mouse Hunt. Um, <laughs> Mouse Hunt. <laughs> most of, well, in, in context to Ringo. Okay. Uh, <laughs> And it's written by John Logan, who's actually uh, a pretty prominent screenwriter. He, he wrote Gladiator, wow. and he wrote uh, some of The Last Samurai, um, and uh, certain movies like that. So he, you know, he's a fixture in Hollywood. But what it's about is there is a lizard, a uh, chameleon. Chameleon, thank you. Who a pet chameleon who falls out of his owner's truck on the road and finds himself wandering through the desert. He wanders off a little bit far and finds an old western style town full of lots of little critters and creatures who live there and have a little society, a town called Dirt. And basically what we have once we're there is every cliche you've ever seen in a western ever. So you okay. have uh, the Rango's kind of, he's, he's this larger than life, he thinks of himself as a thespian, an actor, um, <laughs> and he uh, he knows that the only way he's going to make it in this town of you know rough and tough guys is to kind of pretend that he's you know a rough and tough yeah. western too. So he uh, he lies, he gets lucky a few places, and gets made the sheriff. Uh, once he's there, he uh, he finds that the, there's some corruption in their government, and their uh, water is a, a major resource. It's like their money there, mm. um, and somebody's stealing the water. So he tells everyone that he's going to find out why this is happening. And it's a very simple premise, and there's a lot of people out there who I've already seen are complaining about the simplicity of the plot. But I think the, the something they're really missing in this, which I don't know how they're missing it because it's pretty blatantly obvious to me, is that there's a whole other level to this movie um, that's not for the kids. The kids are going to be there for oh. the little Western plot, and the cute little animals and all that stuff. But there's a, a very subversive thing going on. <laughs> Got a weird definition of cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, 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 some of them are kind of ugly, but you know what I mean. God, these are the ugliest cartoon created <laughs> characters of all time. There's a very subversive plot <laughs> about uh, a movie within a movie. And the movie is very self-aware that it's a movie, and it's always telling its audience that it's a movie, and it refers to its character. There's even like almost a Shakespearean chorus uh, that uh, the, these, uh, what are they, a mariachi yeah. band who play the song, and they kind of tell you how the story's going to progress, and they tell you uh, to watch out for things. And I thought that was sort of interesting. And, and there's a few places where it even borders on uh, fairly... Uh, esoteric and, and, and uh, philosophical in the way it's approaching its main character. And it really reminded me of uh, a kind of a Coen Brothers movie for kids. Like you have the, the really quick, catchy, very uh, sophisticated dialogue. I was surprised at how verbose the movie was. Um, very, very funny dialogue. Uh, almost a joke every minute. And yeah. it's all a very smart humor. Um, there is some slapsticky stuff for the kids there too, but there is a, so much going in, the, going on in the dialogue that I, upon repeat viewings, I'm sure you'll catch even more. And I, I loved all the characters; they're all very well fleshed out, very well rounded. Um, Rango himself, voiced by Johnny Depp, um, I thought one of Johnny Depp's better performances in a while. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think this might be my favorite Gore Bravinsky movie, even above uh, The Ring or the Pirates trilogy. So I give it an A-. minus. I thought it was really good, if not just a little bit too long, though. Yeah. I think the third act drags on for about, again, another 15 minutes too long. And there's a second climax in the movie where they get stuck in a water bottle, which I think you could have cut out the movie completely <laughs> and it would have been fine. But uh, go take your kids to Ringo. I think it's great. Uh, yeah, no. Also enjoyed this movie quite a bit. Don't have quite that much to say about it. <laughs> uh, Again, I said this was the last one I saw. So nice. So uh, I give it a B plus. Um, definitely, I loved the little western plot. Uh, I hated all the. Uh, that's the reason I give it a B plus is it had a lot of um, references to other movies that I don't know why they annoyed me. But there's a random Clint Eastwood character in it, and I was like, that's just crap. And then there's. Uh, <laughs> Three Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas references? Three? I counted one. There's the one major one, and then there's a, at least a second one. Well, there's, I guess, the, the bats and stuff. Like the that. bats yeah, was where yeah. I was going at bat. <laughs> but, um, so it had a lot of good, you know, I guess homages, but for some reason those bugged me. I felt like it was trying to pull, uh, pull from other sources, not using its own steam. 
but uh, still loved the most of the characters. I liked how all the I, these were, I thought they were really ugly critters. I mean, they yeah. really went to the lengths to make sure these creatures were the roughest yeah, and toughest. And, and balls and yeah. yeah. Had also, which was great. I mean, this was a really dirty western. Yeah. I really liked that. Um, the plot was, yeah, as you said, simplistic, but it was supposed to be. It's a kid's movie. Yeah. Um, but I followed, followed it, enjoyed, laughed. Um, what else? I don't even know. Definitely better than the Pirates movies. Way better. Well, <laughs> you know, and it board, like I said, it borders on esoteric, and I was afraid that it was going to go into Pirates of the Caribbean 3 waters, <laughs> where you're not even sure what's going on anymore, and Lord care what's going yeah. on anymore. But then it pulls it back, and it brings it back to the narrative. So I, it, it rides that line between sort of psychedelic weird and, um, you know, simplistic enough to keep understanding. Yeah. No. So. Very fun movie. I enjoyed it quite a bit, and as far as the uh, the spirit of the West, the yeah. uh, the character that sort of paying homage to the man with no name, I felt that it was uh, totally um, acceptable. Yeah. Uh, partly because, like, I feel it, it's really trying to capture kind of a Coen Brothers spirit, and they've always done that in their yeah. movies. They have like these God and Satan characters that they throw in their movies, mm -hmm. and I felt like that was sort of almost like something nice. that again another choice they would have made. I'm just glad it, it almost actually was really afraid is when it starts going into the, the end of the main plot. I was afraid it was going to get when you realize the actual setting of the desert. I was yeah. like, oh crap, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a happy feet ending. <laughs> I, oh, I almost I almost cried. When I was about to see a happy feet ending. <laughs> Luckily, it does not do that. It, it goes back. I guess. Yeah, it pretty much sticks with the Western all the way. Which through. is good. Yeah. So we're going to see our final movie we're going to talk about. <laughs> 